Hello. In this video, we will be doing an example problem wherein we explore chemical potential energy in chemical bonds, which is expressed in terms of enthalpy in kilojoules per mole. So the enthalpy of a dissociation of carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide and oxygen is 532 kilojoules per mole. This is a number very similar to something you might see in a chemistry text or a table of constants for chemicals, that sort of thing. But we're interested in how much energy is required to break up 20 grams of carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide and oxygen, assuming the reaction occurs at constant pressure. And here are some values that we might need from the periodic table, the molar masses of carbon and oxygen. So in this particular situation, we are provided the enthalpy of dissociation, H, but we're interested in the energy required. So we'll begin by reviewing the connection between enthalpy and energy at constant pressure, which was first introduced in section 13.8. So we know the definition of enthalpy. It is the internal energy plus the pressure times the volume. And at constant pressure, the change in enthalpy, delta H, will be the change in energy plus the pressure, which is constant, times the change in volume. Now, we know from the first law of thermodynamics that the change in energy is the heat plus the work. So if we take this expression and substitute it in to our definition for the change in enthalpy, we see that the change in enthalpy is the heat, Q, plus the work, plus the pressure times the change in volume. Now, if you'll recall again from 13.8, the pressure times the change in volume is always going to be opposite the work. Because if the gas contracts, then the outside is doing work on the system. The force and the displacement are in the same direction, so the work is positive but the change in volume is negative because the gas is getting smaller. So with this expression substituted into our definition for enthalpy, we return to our result from 13.8 of that the change in enthalpy is equal to the heat. Now that we've refreshed ourselves on the connection between enthalpy and something that's more in line with energy, this idea of heat, we're now in a position to start solving the problem. So what's provided in the problem is that the change in enthalpy of this reaction is plus 532 kilojoules per mole. From this connection between enthalpy and heat, which is only true at constant pressure, remind you, we know that the heat is 532 kilojoules per mole as well. Since the heat is positive, we know that I must put energy in as heat for the reaction to proceed, which should make some intuitive sense for us in this particular case. Carbon dioxide doesn't just spontaneously dissociate. I have to put energy into the process to make it go. Now we're finally in a position to get some numbers. So we know that we have 20 grams of CO2, but we need a quantity in moles, so we need the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So we're given data from the periodic table. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide will be the molar mass of carbon plus twice the molar mass of oxygen because there's two oxygens. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 12.01 grams per mole plus 
2 times 16 grams per mole, which gives us a total molar mass of carbon dioxide of 44.01 grams per mole. Now we have everything we need to solve the problem. We have 20 grams of carbon dioxide in our sample. We know that one mole of carbon dioxide is 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide. Cancellation. We know that I need to put in 532 kilojoules for each mole of carbon dioxide. That's the value that we were given. And so we therefore need to put in 241 kilojoules of energy as heat to dissociate carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide and oxygen. This concludes this video.